All right, so the next article I have here is by Mark Perry and is greatly titled The Revenge of Colonel Douglas McGregor. And uh, what Mark Perry does here, and I'll also be talking a little bit uh, about an article by Barbara Boland at the American Conservative. And it, it, you know, it's talking about what's going on at the Defense Department post-Trump uh, losing the election. And so, uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, chat marts on Twitter, are wildly speculating that Trump is engaging in a coup. And while they have no real evidence of this other than just personnel changes and the, the speculation of, of their, you know, friends and colleagues and stuff like that, um, you know, they get no fat chats or anything like that. They're, they're just allowed to say this. So anyways, you know, they're, they're crying coup and stuff like that. Uh, but these two articles do a really good job of, of breaking down a couple of things, what the personnel changes are, uh, who ends up leaving, and uh, what it seems like the reason why is, and that's over uh, troop drawdown uh, that Trump wanted to do and some of, uh, you know, his employees push back against. And so, you know, there was an article in the past couple of weeks uh, by Mark Esper talking about how, you know, if, if Trump just said something, if he didn't sign an order that he, you know, really just ignored it, if Trump was tweeting something, he just ignored it. And so, you know, that's kind of concerning because this is the president of the United States, the man responsible uh, for making American defense policy. And here he is just uh, ignoring what the you know president's defense policy is, even though as a uh, secretary of defense, it's his job to carry it out. Uh, you know, it's especially troubling when we're talking about things uh, like w withdrawing troops and stuff like that. And we're on at least on Twitter and what we hear in public from Donald Trump, it seems like. He, you know, is telling them that, you know, we're not debating this. This isn't like something he floated in the back room privately. Uh, but, you know, he's saying like, hey, we are withdrawing our troops from Syria. Uh, they'll say, ah, we don't take this seriously and then don't follow through with it. And so uh, that, you know, it seems like those are the, the main reasons that Esper ends up getting fired. Uh, and here he brings in uh, Christopher Miller to be Secretary of Defense. Uh, Anthony uh, Tata, I believe is how you say his uh, name, uh, gets a, an appointment. And then one of Michael Flynn's uh, acolytes is also now in the administration. But most importantly, uh, we have Douglas McGregor being appointed to as a senior advisor uh, to uh, the, the Secretary of Defense. Now we, we know that it's not going to be a complete drawdown of, of troops from Afghanistan or Iraq. Uh, we have a report today, and I believe the official report from uh, the, the Pentagon, the order is to draw down uh, to 2,500 troops in Afghanistan and Iraq. That will bring uh, about 1,000 troops home from Iraq and another 2,000 home from Afghanistan, if I have that right, or 4,500, 3,500 there. Um, and so... This is a step in the right direction. The troops are supposed to be home by January 15th. Um, but that being said, it's not ending the war, which is, I, I think, what needs to happen to prevent Biden from coming in and, uh, you know, finding different ways to extend this war. So, you know, it's good to see that, you know, this is a step in the right direction and uh, that, you know, the appointment of McGregor and everything uh, that, you know, this is the kind of the Trump policy that you were hoping for all along, right, is that if his subordinates said, you know, are dragging their feet on bringing our troops home, that Donald Trump's going to say, uh, the hell with this, the hell with you, I'm bringing our troops home today, that's the plan, and if you won't do it, I'll find somebody who will, and eventually he would get into people like Douglas McGregor and Christopher Miller, who who seemed to be willing uh, to you know, at least start to do this. Now, my guess is that the Biden administration will not keep either of these guys in their positions. And uh, you know, we're looking at the lights of like Michelle Flournoy and Susan Rice coming into the picture, which I, I don't think bodes well for continuing to bring troops home. Um, I know in the past couple of days, a lot of people have been talking about, you know, Donald Trump 3D chess. This is what he said he was going to do all along kind of stuff. But if we're going to be honest, I, I, that's not who Donald Trump ever was uh, as much as you know, it was right to hope and encourage him to, you know, be that president that was going to end those these wars. Uh, his he, he really never was either that serious or his heart wasn't into it because uh, 
he doesn't end up any ending any of them in four years. And even if he draws down these even more, uh, that's great. Putting McGregor in this position, that's great. Uh, at the same time, it's um, it's not a- enough. Um, the, I guess the last couple of things I will mention here is that maybe 2,500 was what uh, McGregor and Christopher Miller felt like was possible battling uh, the Pentagon bureaucracy over the next couple of months for them to would draw down to maybe uh, it was just going to be impossible to do it any faster with everybody, you know, taking their day and a half to process the paperwork or whatever the hell uh, to slow the thing down a little bit, a little bit, a little bit until the end of the administration. Uh, and then also they're cutting it close, you know, on uh, January 15th, the government never completes a project on time. And so, um, it, you know, if it ends up being a week late, then you're looking at the Biden administration and maybe we don't get the, the drawdown to happen at all. Uh, but that said, if you read this article by Mark Perry, you will realize that uh, McGregor is not only intelligent, uh, but it may, you know, have some viewpoints that I certainly don't agree with. And I'm sure a lot of listeners don't agree with, uh, like wanting, I think, to declare martial law at the southern border and stuff like that. Uh, what it seems like he's devoting his attention to here is drawing down the troops, which is great. And uh, as being, you know, apparently one of the Pentagon's best thinkers. Maybe he's the guy that could actually get this done.